systems green. All right, so it's me, John, and I wanted to make this tutorial video on how to use trading paints in the the simplest in the simplest way imaginable. Essentially, it's the way how I I use trading paints. But before I start the program, I got to show you guys and gals how to how to first install the program. So me minimize this. Yeah, amazing I kept this little screen. Imagine I can't save this wallpaper back when Discovery Family is called The Hub, which is what it should be called. All right, so I want to go first to the internet and then Bing, which I usually prefer as a search engine over Google. So yeah, I want to put in trading paints. So and click on the showroom. So before you start using trading paint, trading paints, what you need to do is you need to sign up for a trading paints pro membership, which is only about 24 US dollars per year. So it's a very small price and it's well worth it. So to to do that, you got to go to paint builder in here and then so you can open of course I got my projects in here, but um, I want to first get the description open. So yeah, what you have to do is you have to you have to uh, select a Trading Paints Pro membership. And all you do is follow the steps, which which you can easily do, and you gotta do it through PayPal and all that and all that stuff. And once you have your pro membership, what you then need to do is install trading paints. So what you need to do is you have to click in, install downloader, which you can click up here after you um, create your account. Which your account is the same thing as your as your iRacing ID number and your password. So. What you need to do is click install downloader. You click on the picture, then install downloader, and then download trading paints. And wait, and then it'll give you the file, the uh, startup program in here in your downloads. So you do is click on the folder, go to the downloads, and then you click on this. And then. I already have it installed on my computer, but I'll show you what it says. So you click next, and then none of this, none of these will appear if it's your first time installing. But since I already have it installed, um, so what I'll do is just click repair or something, and you just hit repair and just say yes. But it should be working okay though. But yeah, what you do is you just follow the procedures and then you just save it to whatever drive you want to save it to. And then once you have it saved, um, it'll appear and then save it as an icon on your desktop. So to start it, what you do is you double click on the trading paints and then you want to have this checked automatically fresh paints. And you don't have to have start trading paints on system startup checked. So, because you want to start it whenever you want to start it to use it. So, what you do is you go to My Paints on here, and you can exit out of these two. And what it'll do is it'll take you to this page, just what it looks like. And then what you want to do is go to your profile, and it'll show you my profile as an example. So, I have it all laid out here. I got paints that I created all here saves all your paints so yeah um, so how to create a paint with your with your I with your trading paints pro so what you want to do is to start so I'm gonna do a I'm gonna show you guys a little tutorial on how I usually do trading paints so what you want to do is you want to go to paint builder and under the paint cars tab, let me let me actually make that a little bit clarifies. So you want to go to the paint cars tab up here, and then click paint builder. And you want to click the new, right down here. 
So and then you want to pick any vehicle that's on the list here. There are going to be some cars that are not on the list. One car that's not going to be on here is the Mercedes W12 Formula One car. Because I read of an agreement that Mercedes AMG had with iRacing on their car on the use of their car. So unfortunately, third party programs like trading paints, you won't be able to paint the car, unfortunately. So you're going to have to use the default paint schemes that iRacing provides. But you have, you have your list of cars. You scroll down, you got all the other cars on here that you can select from. So for this one, I'm going to pick the most popular car that's used on the ovals. This one right here, the Arkham Menards Chevy Impala. So you just want to click on that and then click continue. So this is the whole, this is the template right here, this picture. And then you have the car parts. You got your list of things right here. And then you got your logos and text, your shapes, and your base paint. What I usually do is I always delete the logos and text because you don't really need the trading paints logos on your car because you want to make your own paint scheme, right? You don't want those pesky trading paints logos on your car so for your base paint this is essentially what what color your car is painted and what you can do is you can click on the uh, click on the base paint here it's got the plus in the car picture so in here you have these pre-made templates these pre-made little designs you can add to your car now the choices are limited with the trading paints pro but you can pick any number of these you want. So for this for this tutorial, I'm going to pick this one right here. And I'll pick another one. I'll take this one right here. So you can use any number to combine to combine, you know, you can combine these designs. So you can make it, you can choose any way you want to. So this is the paint that's the primary paint on the car so what, to change the color what you do is you double click on it and this corresponds to the color of the design so I want to change so what you have is you got your basic colors your saved colors which are colors that you used previously and then you have your the advanced which you can create any color and the advanced ones really fun so I'm going to change the color here. Let's make it kind of like a green. And let's do this. this. So yeah, let's make it this color, this little green color right here. And then you want to click Update. And what it'll do is it'll change the color of the base pattern. And then you want to do the other base pattern or any other base patterns you have. If you only have one, that's okay. But if you have multiple ones and you want to change the colors, then yeah you should do that so this is the first base pattern so what you want to do is then go and then for the second base pattern i want to change the look the color so let's make that let's make that a blue kind of like this and for lightness let's darken it a little bit like that and then saturation leave it 100 or you can change that but it looks better this way <laughs> so you want to click update and then you have the update to you have to paint to the other pattern. All right. So and then we want to change this pink because I don't know. I think you guys guys would want pink. So let's pick a basic color. So let's make it white. So you click white like that, and it'll change the color. So and then. You're one, and then you have these options. You have these options down here. So your car mask you always want to have on because that that's the car right here because you you're painting the car, right? You can turn on the wireframe, which gives you what the car would look like. It would look like if you were, if it were a 3D model. So because this is a 2D model of the car, so the wireframe it gives you. It shows you what the 3D model is, and then for sponsor blocks, it's where you put your sponsors, and for number blocks, it's where the the numbers go. I always use the uh, the default number on iRacing, 
So, you know, when you paint the car on, on iRacing, you can pick whatever number style that's given and the numbers will appear in these blocks right here. But for sponsors to get those, you use the logos and text, which I'm going to get to in just a little bit. And then you have the grid, which I don't really use much because it's kind of complicated using the grid because, you know, it's not very accurate most of the time. And usually with me, I kind of like to try to... I like to try to stick things inside the sponsor blocks or maybe a little bit outside of it if there's enough room, judging by the curves here on the wireframe. So anyways, um, for logos and text, you have your my logos, your insert logo, and your text. So, and then of course with shapes, you can insert any shape. And if you look at the shapes, yeah, kind of useless I don't really use it that much but you can pick any shape and add here and then insert it and adjust the size but I don't really use the insert shape because the insert shape is worthless you know not a lot of shapes you can pick so to get your to get that you know logo you want or that image you want what you want to do is you want to go to my logos now I put up a bunch of logos in here a ton of logos I saved in here but to bring in the logo that that you want to bring in you want to click on upload a logo and then you want to go to the area that you saved your logo in with me I usually choose pip the pictures on the uh, C drive and I say it saves everything in here but I'm going to first, but before I do the upload logo, let's grab a picture of something. So let's cancel out of, cancel out of these. So let's do a Bing search. And I'm going to go to images. And let's get a picture of, let's say, oh, I know. Let's get, let's get a picture of home. Let's get a picture of Homer Simpson. <laughs> And then you want to do PN, and you want the PNG one because the PNG, the portable network graphic images, are the ones that are the ones that they use. So let's grab a picture of Homer, <laughs> Homer with a beer mustache. Let's grab that. So, and then what you want to do is you want to save the image as. Uh, just call it Homer. I'll just call it Homer. Beer must Homer beer mustache <laughs> and just hit save. All right, so yeah, I saved it, un saved it under the pictures. So, okay, so you got the picture. So now, what I want to do is go to my logos, go to upload a logo, and then go to the pictures, and then the image, the image should be in here. Yeah, right here is the picture. So I click open, and then the image comes up right here. So yeah, you get that, gotta adjust, adjust the size. Obviously, you can make it as big or small as you want. So I'm gonna put this picture of Homer on the hood. So we want it to face not this way, but this way, the other way. So what you want to do is you want to right click on the image. You want to go to rotate 180 degrees. You want to actually rotate it 270 degrees. So first do 80 and then click on rotate, then right click on it, and then do 90 degrees. And then you can shrink the image down based, and then you can shrink the image down to fit in the square or you can maybe have it a bit bigger. But what I, what I usually do is try to match the lines up with the box. So right, right about here is pretty good. So, and then if you want to copy the image, what you do is right click and then click duplicate. And then you can drag it around anywhere and then you want to rotate it. Yeah, just right click on it and then just pick 90 or 180, but we want to do 90. So let's make move Homer like right back here and then shrink him down so you can fit him like right in there or something. And then you want to put this on the other side. So what I usually do is I duplicate it and then rotate 180. And then what I do is match, try to match the line. Try to kind of view the picture as sort of like a line. And then if I can get this to match the line, so to speak, 
it doesn't have to be completely accurate, but I match the line up. I try to line it up with the corresponding side. And it's a little tricky to do at first, but once you get it, it's really easy. So it's, yeah, that's about pretty good. So yeah. And then, of course, you know, you can then just do the logos, any logo you want, and then you can put it on the back of the car, really anywhere you want on the car, but just don't put it in the number blocks, though, because that's where, the, that's where your car number is. All right, and then, so you then want to, and then, of course, for car parts, you have your decal color logos. So decal, I wouldn't touch this at all because... I usually leave everything on default, but there are others that do custom decals and stuff like that. I'm not really an expert at that, but I usually do do it on the default. And then for color logos, you can change the color. Let's change this to black. And then just click update, and then it changes the color logos to black. And then the front spoiler, which I'll change to... Let's change that to... this. Let's change that to black as well, and then you can just and then you can just simply keep doing it for everything. You don't have to do it the same color, but in the tutorial, I'm just gonna do everything just to keep it simple. You know, just do the same color for everything, and then just do, keep, and just double click on, and then just pick the color and just keep doing it for everything. And then, but you can pick any color you want. So then for the tape, let's make this, just do everything black. And then the pit box, you know, we can make, let's make this black. All right. So that's, so now you have the car. So then you have to give this, and then you have to give this a name, which I'm going to call, I'm just going to call this, uh, I accidentally messed up here. See, so yeah, I want to click re I click on the gear, then rename, and then I'm just going to call this tutorial. And you just hit rename, and then um, you don't want to, you don't need to click any of this. But what you want to do, you could click race this paint, but the easier way to do it is just to click on, click the button up here, which is race. So just click, and then just hit hit race, and then it'll ask you if you want to race it. Just hit confirm. And then, uh, all right, so now you're racing the paint scheme as it is. So when you open trading paints, so when you open iRacing, the, with, you gotta leave this open though before you do iRacing. So when you open iRacing up and then just go into a session, which I will do, only thing is I don't have my racing equipment hooked up, but um, let's X out of this. All right, so let's minimize and then go to iRacing. Let's go on the iRacing membership. I'll sign in under my account as an example. All right, and it's got to connect to the uh, the UI, the user interface. All right, so let's go to go racing, test drive, and then just pick the Arca car. I don't want that. I want to, we want to go to Arca Menard Chevy Impala, and then Dan, go to Daytona, and track configurations, and just hit continue. Now, this is probably not going to get past the configuration screen, so I might have to quickly set up my racing equipment to show you guys what it would look like. Now in the any official session, you're gonna have to wait until iRacing and until the uh, trading paints downloads all of the paint schemes from the other cars. It'll give you a, a down it'll and then what you do is you click on this when you're on when you're on the screen. And it'll say downloading, and then once it's and then once it's done downloading, when it says all files are up to date, then just click on practice or whatever session you're in, and then the paint should show up on your car. And I just gotta get this connected, but I have a feeling this is probably only gonna get to the configuration screen. 
So I'm probably I might have to pro possibly set up my racing equipment really quickly. So I'll probably do that right now. I just gotta make sure everything is all set. So let's let me let me set up my racing equipment real quick. I gotta wrestle the chair here. All right. And I gotta set up. I gotta then hook everything up here. This is really so yeah I have everything set up to where it's easy where I have I can easily set up everything it's so easy with this play seat I can just move it around it's so easy because thanks to the carpet actually not having a ton of friction in it you know I can actually move my play seat around really easily okay then I got my plug for the shifter All right, and then I want to now do is turn on my Fanatec equipment. And it's got to let that reset. All right. Time to yeah, let me move the camera down so you guys can see me. All right, so I'm sitting in my play seat here. I can reach the mouse over here. See, so yeah, for controls, you can easily get this all set up. It's no problem. This is really easy to do on setting up. And then I can just, then I can just adjust everything. I can just then adjust everything later. All right, let me just make sure that. But yeah, that's the thing. You know, you have to have, um, you have to have everything set on here. And then of course have the shifter, and then of course this is the shifter. Let me just get everything configured here. It's an easy, quick, easy configuration. Oops. All right. There's that. That. And then just, and then you can just hit done. Control is not detected. I can you can just I can just hit this button here and then I'm gonna ditch that anyway. All right. Then fail tech because it has the linear setup. So what I want to do is just put in i racing steps. Just say no on the setup and then just go to Daytona Road. And then it should then have everything. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to ensure that the th that the window pops up here so you want to click on that so you always want to have this open but when you enter any session and then have that and then when it says that all files are up to date then you can go ahead and click on the session and the uh, image will show right up on the car so that's the that's the quick way of getting your image to work on the car now to get it to show, I need to move the I need to move the car just a little bit, and just stop the car, and just hold escape down. See, the image comes right up. See, the paint scheme just comes up right there. But not done yet though. So let's go ahead and quit, and just go back, and just close this for a second. Now what I want to do is I want to close out of this. So before I do it, so before I go anywhere, what I want to do is I want to do the showroom on getting the paint scheme to the showroom. So yeah, I want to go ahead and leave the site. So what you want to do is you want to be in this menu right here, which is the um, My Paints. So you want to click on My Paints, and then it'll bring you to this. So you want to go to Arkham Menard Chevy Impala. It's the car I did. Now, what you have is an image, a image where it has preview on it. What I do is, 
since I usually keep the default stickers, what I do is I click on paint options and then add default decal stamp. And you just want to click add stamp and then it'll add the default decals on. And it'll then say it's been added to your paint. And then what you want to do is you want to right click over this and hit save image as. And then I'm just going to call this tutorial and just call it tutorial. And it has to be saved as a JPEG. And once that's done saving, what you want to do is you want to go on paint cars and then paint builder. And you want to open the open up the tutorial scheme. So now what you want to do is click on the gear right here and then click to submit to showroom. Just click leave. And then and then um, yeah, and just call it tutorial and then you can add in a description if you want to and then for pictures um, add in the add in the picture you just saved this one right here and then you want to and then just scrolling through this you don't have to change anything on here you can just leave it as it is and the car number type you don't have to worry about that and then number font no worries because again I use the number iRacing and you want to click add paint to showroom and then it's in in here and then and then it's not done yet though so then you, what you want to do is go to edit and then you want to replace that file because that's the one that's the original file you made in the in the paint area so what you want to do is you want to save the picture because that has that has the stamp in it and then you want to replace that picture with the picture with this picture again and then you want to delete picture one you just click remove and then you want to click update paint all right so yeah and it's all done so you want to click race this paint and then and then you'll be racing the paint once you enter a session. Okay, so that's pretty much about it for the tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And I'll see you guys on the track. Bye.